Hi there, I'm Aaron from Solace. Do you want to see just how easy it is to stream message data directly from your PubSub Plus event broker up into AWS S3 without needing to go through an API gateway? Stick around, I'm going to show you how. Okay, so this video is meant to be a bit of an epilogue to the live stream that I did last week where I talked all about RDPs, how they're, uh, how they're architected, how they're configured, uh, went through some troubleshooting steps. And at the end of the live stream, I tried to integrate it with S3. This is a new feature that came out in 9.13 um, and I couldn't quite get it working on the live stream. Thought I, so I thought I would uh, make a video and just go through the steps and show you that uh, that is not hard, not that hard to get working. So. Um, I've got a, uh, a new broker here running on my laptop. You can see this local host up at the top. Uh, 9.13 is the version that's required for this. That's the version that got released with the uh, AWS Signature version 4 required to integrate directly into uh, to S3. Prior to that, we typically went through an API gateway. Most of our cloud native service integration pieces are through API gateways. Uh, but yeah, this is, allows the RDP in the Solace broker to talk directly to S3. Um, so you can see I don't have any queues configured. I don't have any connectors configured. Uh, the only thing I do have is I have a little test publisher running here uh, and publishing a, a message every five seconds on this topic called orders. Uh, you can see that it's just, uh, actually I'll show you the code. Um, this is just the hello world uh, JCSMP sample that I've taken and modified a little bit. So every five seconds, yeah, it's publishing a message on topic orders. Uh, I've added a few uh, user properties here. You can see there's an order ID, which is just some random characters, uh, author, the type, and a little payload uh, that looks like some JSON. So every five seconds, I got a new. This is just from some test data. I want to get this data from my Solus event mesh up into S3 uh, for doing whatever, for uh, historical views of things, right? So, um, so what are we going to do? First, we're going to need to create a queue. If you want to go through all these steps kind of nice and slowly with more description, uh, I'll put a link to the live stream that I did somewhere up here across my face. You can go ahead and check it out. But I'm just going to kind of quickly through step through uh, these steps here. So I can go ahead and create a new uh, RDP, call it RDP S3. Uh, make sure it's enabled. Uh, I don't really need vendor. Aaron, that's, that's the vendor. I'm not a, really a vendor, though. Uh, set that up. We're going to go into it. We need the queue binding and the rest consumer, right? So let's go ahead and create the queue binding, that queue that we just created. Cool. Now I don't have a topic subscription on that queue yet, so it's not attracting any messages. So this is kind of just getting everything set up. Post request target. Uh, I'm going to say test four, and you'll see why I'm choosing test four in just a second. That is the path. So in the URL, that's the path that comes uh, where we're actually going to be posting or putting our data into. Uh, we also need the REST consumer. And this is essentially the uh, the destination, the host, the URL, the port where we're going to be sticking this data. So this is S3. Uh, so over here, I have my S3 bucket that I've made. You can see there's already some test folders. So that's why we're going to be doing test four. Uh, so I just need this uh, URL for one of these. So let's just copy the URL here. And let's go back to my client and paste that whole thing in. So there's the whole thing. Uh, I don't need this HTTPS at the beginning. I just want the host name. And I don't need this test two at the end because that's being added by our queue binding, right? So just the URL or the host. Uh, it is port 443, enable TLS. Uh, it is put. Now, if you want to know the steps that I'm going through, uh, actually head over to our solace.com slash connectors. This is our connector hub where you can kind of type in whatever you want to integrate with and we'll, we'll show you some different ways of doing that. Type in S3 here and you'll see you get a couple options uh, either via stream sets or via solace directly through the gateway. Um, but this is the one that we're going to be that I'm doing right now. And you can see that, yeah, they specifically call out uh, in 9.13, we've enabled some extra functionality to allow you to integrate directly. So these are the steps that I'm going through if you want to kind of go ahead and follow along with yourself. So I've got my URL. I got my, I make sure this turned on, enabled. Uh, now, this would be all that's required if you were posting to some uh, host that didn't have any authorization or, sorry, authentication. Uh, but because it's AWS, we do have some authentication. So uh, you can do basic username, password, but we are going to be doing AWS Signature version 4. This is the, the last bit here. So I got some details over here off screen. I'm going to copy them in. Uh, access key is this. Change my secret. 
Uh, I'm probably going to blur this out in post. Oh, it's already blurred. That's great. Uh, region ID, I got that. This is going to be in Singapore, where I am currently located. And service ID is S3. This was the piece that I missed in my live stream. Uh, I forgot that I was supposed to actually type in S3, and I just put in something random. And even in the troubleshooting logs that I looked at, you could actually see it clearly said uh, this, you know, this key belongs to S3. You're entering a random service ID. So if I'd only slowed down a little bit on the live stream and looked at it, I would have figured it out. Okay, so that should be all that is required. Should be. Uh, so far, so good. It looks like we're up three out of three connections. I refresh that. So now if I add a topic subscription to that queue to start attracting these order topics, right? These uh, orders, uh, they should go into the queue and therefore into the RDP and up into S3. So let's do that. Let's go to the queue, go back to S3 bucket, make sure nothing's, we don't have a test four yet. Yeah, no test four yet. So nothing's kind of come through the RDP. Let's go into my queue here and add a subscription to start attracting those order topics. Orders. Now, people that know me and my videos typically expect more dynamic and hierarchical uh, topic structures. Uh, I'm publishing on just a single string, kind of boring, but I'm going to show you another video uh, how we can actually improve this topic uh, from being just a single static word into something a little more descriptive. So there we go. That'll be for another video though. So here I've added my subscription. Go back to my summary. Uh, hopefully we don't have any messages queuing up. That's good. And if I pop back over to my connectors, it's still showing up. So, so far so good. Doesn't look like we have any errors. Come back over here and refresh my buckets. Hey, there we go. Test four. Okay. But it's not a folder. It is just a single object. The reason for that is because it's essentially overwriting. Each message that I'm publishing is actually overwriting or overwriting, sorry, the, the contents of the previous one. So we need to have S3 buckets require a unique uh, file name essentially, or a unique path to create a unique file or a unique uh, object inside the bucket. So now we're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking on the post request target to make sure that it's unique. And for this, we're gonna be using a new feature that came out in 9.11 called uh, substitution expressions. Uh, if you just go into your favorite search engine and type in solace, rest, or RDP substitution expressions, it should take you to this page in the docs. I'll put a link down in the description below, but it basically allows us to use variables that can either take stuff from the message, in this case, parts of the topic string, or you can use timestamps, which we're gonna do in a second, random bits and pieces. You can actually have it generate um, a UID, some random bytes, um, basically allows you to build your own URL for posting into your cloud native services. And you can see down here, we are actually, we can actually take pieces of the message ID, sender IDs, user property is string, some cool stuff like that. So let's quickly pop back over to my connector. Let's go into that queue binding and let's make it a little bit more interesting and useful. So right now, yeah, because we have this kind of static test for, if that's the only place that it's publishing to, we need to make this a little bit better. So first thing first, we're gonna change the request target evaluation to substitution expressions, which tells the RDP we're going to be doing some, uh, some cool stuff. Now I'll make a new folder called test five. What do I want my URL to look like? Maybe my file names should be uh, orders, uh, underscore, how about a timestamp? Let's do that. So we can do, uh, again, I'm, if you check out this page in the docs, substitution expressions, you should see uh, everything that I'm kind of doing here. Uh, dollar squiggly TS for timestamp, open close brackets. That will give us a timestamp. And one extra cool thing, uh, because it supports user properties, you might have noticed that, yeah, I have my, even though my topic is really boring orders, I actually have this user property map with more descriptive stuff inside. So let's grab out this order ID and make that part of our URL. So we need to grab order ID from my user properties list. And if you quickly check the substitution expressions, you'll see here, this is the thing we want. User property as string, property name. All right, so I'm gonna do that, uh, dollar squiggly. Uh, I already forget what it's called. User property as string user property as string and then bracket. I think I have to put a quote order ID squiggly. Let's see if that works. Apply. Well, no errors. So if all goes well, I should pop back over to my bucket here, 
hit refresh. Ah, there we got a test five folder, and inside that, check it out. Now every message that gets published, zoom out a little bit. Every message that gets published, it is actually publishing on this uh, test five orders, which is hard coded, and then a timestamp, which makes sure that you know we're not going to overwrite anything because it's constantly publishing a new uh, timestamp. And then the uh, order ID, which is from the actual message payload, not the payload, but the user property map. So I could have added the author instead or something else, um, but just goes to show how we can now take parts of the message, whether it's the sequence number, whether it's a sender ID, uh, parts of the user property, parts of the, of, the, of the topic as well. If this was a more descriptive topic, I could have actually pulled out pieces of the topic and use them in my post request target to generate my file names inside my S3 bucket. So there you go. I'm sorry I didn't get it done on the live stream, but I hope that proves that it's actually pretty straightforward and pretty easy to get this working uh, directly from Solace, from your event mesh, from your broker, up into S3, uh, where you can do whatever cloud native stuff you want with it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like that, please give the video a like, subscribe to the Solace channel if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye.